All righty, good morning. Subcommittee will come to order. Uh, who was here first? Cree or Emma? Cree. Cree, come on, man. <laughs> <coughs> 698, and these amendments will be exactly the same for 699. I'll start with 698 on line 15 of the bill after the word inches. Strike the word in and insert inside. So it, it would read 36 inches inside diameter. The second amendment is on line 28 after the word company. Insert a new sentence. Upon request by the company, the director or his designee shall review such stock work instruction within 48 hours of issue. Questions on proposed amendments? I have uh, two more. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. <laughs> the third of four is on line 30. After the word proceeding, we would insert concerning the stop work instruction and any review by the director or his designee. And the final one is on line 36 after the word instruction would insert or preliminary decision rendered by the director or his designee. Do I understand the amendments? <coughs> oh, 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 okay. I, like it. All right. I understand first of all on, on the, the last one the, when it says explain that to me what is preliminary. I'm, I'm probably going to have the one to explain okay. because I think the last amendment. Do you want to go ahead? Yeah. Okay. On, on the last amendment where, yes, where you say preliminary. Yes. What, what does that mean? That it sounds a little ambiguous to me. Um, certainly, sir. Thank you. Um, Angie Jacobs with DEQ. That last um, sentence relates back to that Same. review that the um, the director or his designee would provide within 48 hours on behalf of, uh, at the request of the company. That's the preliminary decision that is referenced because those are case decisions we needed to get that in there for APA purposes. Thank you. Right, if there are no objections, we'll adopt those amendments by general consent. <coughs> and, and since they're hanging up, the bills are identical except applying to two different yeah, sections. Yeah. Peace out. Yeah, they, they, are, they are exactly the same. Okay. One, one, one is for stormwater right. management, the other is for soil erosion. You know, they, they aren't designed to sl stop or slow down the pipelines, they're just designed to give the, give the, the tools in case there's a, there's a problem. They, 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 they can pull the plug for a short period to resolve some issues. Well, for a very short period of time, they can stop work in, in a specific site to right. fix a problem. Any questions of the senator? Anyone in the audience to be heard on Senate Bill 698, support or opposition? <coughs> Mr. Chairman, uh, Bill Murray with Dominion Energy, and we support the bills and appreciate the comments. Mr. Chairman, Rob Shin with EQT. We developed the Mound Valley Pipeline. We appreciate the uh, department and the patron working with us, and um, we're good with the bill. Anyone else? Any members, what is your pleasure? Mr. Chairman. This yes, sir. The, the difference between this one and the other one, this, this one basically would only stop work in, in the specific area where there was a problem and not pipeline before that, that Mr. Chairman, that, that was the intent from the beginning, but the language that we added in the Senate made that very clear. Okay. okay. I'll move the report. Second. It's been moved properly seconded to recommend the report to Senate Bill 698. There's no discussion. Committee members, of course, will vote on the motion to report the <laughs> amendment. All members voted, get it reported, the bill is supported five to nothing. Would I be correct? 699. Same matter, different section, people who supported the other one like this one. What is your pleasure? Yes, sir. Technically, uh, are we making this sound? I 
that was discussed. I'm sorry, let's saying. get it. We need to, you're exactly right. Prior to taking that motion, without objection, we'll adopt the same <coughs> amendments to 699 as we did 698. Thank you for catching that. It's another problem before. And now your motion to report seconded. There's no discussion on the motion. Don't record your vote on the motion to report with amendments. Thank you. On matters, recommend 45 no. Thank you, Craig. It's all your news this morning from the hotel. Yeah. Yeah. Emmett, that means it's you. It is me. Good morning, everybody. I bet it was that way when you woke up this morning. It was you. You saw me. <laughs> <laughs> I, was a little, I was a little foggy when I woke up this morning. I was wanting to say something. But <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Just, just get <coughs> Which is your preference to you go know, first? Just, you can do them in numerical order. All right, 582. If you want. If you want. The um, 582, Mr. Chairman. Uh, was, was basically intended to increase the threshold for substitution of property uh, when lands are converted from open space land. It's been an issue uh, that's involved with some of the mitigation that's gone on uh, with the current pipeline projects that are going through. And this one was worked out uh, uh, extensively over a period of time, but apparently everybody wasn't at the table. It was mostly conservation groups, and I thought that's where the primary concern was it was basically uh, limiting in some ways their ability to mitigate through converting, uh, establishing a higher standard. I understand now that uh, just yesterday that the uh, interest of the pipeline groups were, was not at the table. Uh, and they weren't paying attention to the bill as it moved over. So they have some issues with it. So you know that's, that's basically what the bill does. I think in all fairness, uh, BOF had a little bit of concern. They thought maybe they might want to tweak it on the House side, uh, but the pipeline interest might want to do something more sinister. sinister you know, sure. <laughs> they, they didn't seem interested in it. Yes, at least yesterday in proposing amendments. They thought that their thought was we ought to carry it over, but uh, I'll let them speak for themselves or whoever you want to hear. Well, one quick question. Mm -hmm. Lies 3435, the a fund to be managed by a public body. I don't know that I've ever seen that kind of language or with some nebulous public body yet to be determined? And that, yeah, that was something that was negotiated when, when I was not in, in the room. There maybe somebody wants to speak to that, but the, ascent, the, the essence of it is that there are, are lands that, uh, that we acquire or have easements on that the BOF specifically, as you're aware, uh, you know, they, they have responsibilities for basically maintaining that easement or that interest in open space or conservation and they expend funds in monitoring that to ensure that it remains as was intended. They have a fund, and I think it was intended that that money would be set aside in, like it could be a county or it could be to BOF or something like that. I, I agree it's not precise. And, and the second part of that, the monies, mm -hmm. who determines how That's much? That would be negotiated, of course, like the, like the, the amount, the extent of the land as well. But, but who's holding who hostage in that negotiation? That's, that's the whole deal. And, uh, and unfortunately, Mr. Chairman, this, this is the, the, al the alternative to this, as the pipeline folks told me, you know, if it gets too difficult <coughs> for us to get a bargain in mitigating this, negotiating, we just go through a condemnation that the courts decide. All right, you mean those to be heard on Senate Bill 582? Support first. <coughs> well, Mr. Chairman, I'm Chris Costin with Fairfax County. I think we have an inadvertent co consequence when it comes to us on this. And so, that's a good thing. Right, we support all of the, um, I mean, our staff has no problem with the increased uh, standard, so to speak, for open space land. It is only that fund that we have an issue with on lines 34 and 35. And let me see if I can quickly explain. So, under the entire chapter, a public body is defined in 1700, 51 to 1700, and we would be one of the public bodies. So, we would be the ones receiving the county or the park authority, which we have. We would receive an, a, a, a fee simple or an easement for conservation over open space land. We would be the beneficiary of it. We could, we could enforce it if someone tried to you know, violate that open space land. If we were going to put a road through there, we would also be the applicant to convert that open space land to some kind of development, the orderly development according to our comprehensive plan. And we would get alternative open space land to replace it, much like you would do in my mind with wetlands when you, you know, destroy them. 
But then what this does is, so we would be the applicant as well as the public body. We'd be, we would have to negotiate with ourselves, if you will, to create some special fund in our own budget, which we would fund. We would already be managing the replacement open space land. We would just like an exception, and I have an amendment that I've offered to the senator. I spoke with him in his office a long time ago. Um, that would exclude localities and park authorities when they're the applicant from having to have this fund created because it's an unnecessary administrative step that we otherwise take care of because we're not only the public body making the decision, but also the applicant who would be managing effectively the open space land itself, that's all. And I have an amendment written that would do that, that would just give us a short exemption at the beginning of line 34. Is there anyone in the room in support without any reservations? Sorry. All right, that, that was a factored support. Understood. Uh, are there opponents? I'm going to see more coming forward on this point. Chairman, make sure that with you yesterday. Uh, members of the Senate Committee, Rob Shin with EQT. Um, we appreciate the intent of um, Senator Hanger's bill. Uh, as Senator Hanger said, um, once a pipeline company, interstate pipeline company, gets a certificate of public need, they do have condemnation rights. Um, but the current statute really <coughs> encourages the parties to come to the table and negotiate voluntarily. In the case of MVP, we negotiated with uh, Virginia Outdoors Foundation. All we needed was one piece of property for an access road, 0.32 acres. We ended up paying um, $75,000 and um, 10 acre piece of property. So the 32 to one ratio, which you might say, boy, BOF got a great deal, and I think they really did. The condemnation value is only like $461. But in that case, we're incented to um, voluntarily negotiate with them because it was going to speed up the process, just give us a certain deal, you know, sooner in the process. So for, it was a good deal for us, a good deal with BOF. Under the bill, um, it would really tie our hands and probably um, not allow us to negotiate um, as readily. On line 21, for example, it talks about the public body, in this case it would be BOF, may require a letter from the governing body of the locality demonstrating the essentiality of the project. Oftentimes the local governing bodies are hostile, so that could essentially become a veto. Um, it talks line 30 to 32 about if the proposed substitute land is not adjacent to the land to be diverted, then the applicant would have to provide a clear explanation of why the acquisition of adjacent land is impossible, and how the proposed substitute land would provide replacement conservation value. So it's just, it's significantly elevating up the requirements. We think the current statute is demonstrated in our project and ACP. It, it worked out to everyone's benefit in the end. So for that reason, we uh, ask you just to, uh, to not act on the bill and happy to work with Senator Hanger and other stakeholders to see if we can you know, improve the process going forward. Thanks so much. Others to be heard on Senate Bill 582. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, members of the subcommittee, David Clark representing the Virginia Oil and Gas Association, and we also have concerns about this bill. And uh, we do apologize that we were not part of the discussions that led to the development of this. I'll echo what Rob said that we think the process that's been voluntary has proven to work pretty well and to the advantage that we think of BOF and, uh, and the Commonwealth. Um, share the concerns that Rob mentioned. Uh, perhaps there is a need to tighten the process up. I know there was some <coughs> controversy as this was going through. Uh, we just don't think that this is the way to do that. So, thank you. Senator Hank. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, given the fact that uh, everyone wasn't at the table, and, and now they are, uh, and probably we could, we could use some time The interest protects until next up. year or thank you, until next year or to be yeah, continue okay. to twenty nineteen okay. if that's agreeable. Okay. Uh, the uh, <coughs> the the interest of course of trying to protect the you know, the, as Bob indicated that sometimes the county is adversarial. Well that's true, but they're representing the will of the people who really are concerned about the open space land being converted and the project coming through. So that's a natural type thing to happen. So the intent of the bill of course is to to hit a happy spot because there was controversy, significant controversy, obviously associated with people 
quite frankly, some of them just didn't want the pipeline to come through, period, you know, so this was a, an issue that was involved there. But I would, that would be, that would be, I wouldn't object to that. Well, what is your question? The discussion? Well, no, I would move to carry over, and I appreciate the senator recognize, and, you know, there's a little extra discussion needed, so thank you for that, but I would make that motion. Second. Moved and seconded to carry over Senate Bill 582. <coughs> For the discussion, all those in favor of carryover signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. And you have a note. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Nine fifty. And let me tell you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, everybody at the table that I'm aware of <laughs> on this one, uh, because this one was uh, just a lot of conservation. Uh, there was a, a similar bill that was was being worked on by Delegate Russell uh, on the House side at the same time, but these conversations were not timely enough for, for his bill to su survive, so he deferred uh, to the work that was ongoing on the Senate bill. And what this does is designed to ensure that water quality is protected in local streams and downstream streams in conjunction with these large interstate projects. And I will be, be quick to point out that it doesn't apply to the current pipeline projects that are in place. It only would be affected forward for, for pipelines that have uh, an inside diameter <coughs> 36 inches uh, effective for applications that July 1, 2018. What it does is establish a standard because the, that was, I think there was a lot of consternation uh, within uh, the to the State Water Board in terms of what could and should be done to properly uh, uh, protect the interests of water quality. Um, the, and basically it builds on the experience uh, in the regulatory process of these pipelines. Uh, applications were moving through. It clarifies the process for which the EQ and State Water Control Board will determine whether there was anyone to issue a certification required by Section 401 and that a proposed pipeline will not harm water quality. Uh, yeah, there are a number of things that it does as far as a detailed individual Virginia water protection permit to protect each wetland and stream proposed to be crossed by the pipeline. It involves an evaluation of, of uh, upstream activities particularly uh, in uh, uh, sensitive areas uh, where there's going to be trenching, karst geology, slopes, uh, those types of issues. Uh, and the department is able to, under the provisions of the bill, to recover the direct cost uh, through an administrative charge. Uh, it does address one issue uh, that some of the conservation community uh, really wanted to address, and that there is one issue that is currently in litigation dealing with board's evaluation of erosion sediment control plans and stormwater plans and so we avoided that issue. Uh, some of the conservation community would <coughs> like to have that issue been addressed in the bill. It's not because it's currently in litigation. Any questions of the Senator? Anyone in the audience to be heard on Senate Bill 950? In support? Mr. Chairman, uh, Rob Chin with EQT. We appreciate the work with uh, the patron. Uh, I think I speak for the, uh, the industry interest that uh, we think it's a good bill. Thank you. Before we is there any opposition? All right. Go ahead, Peggy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Peggy Sanders, Jesse Day Foundation. Just, I'm here to express my appreciation for Senator Hanger for having brought this bill. It includes a number of important things that I think grow out of the experience that we're uh, seeing in Virginia right now. As Senator Hanger said, it does address all the issues uh, that some of us in the conservation community are uh, concerned about, but it makes important progress uh, going forward. We support the bill. Mr. Chairman, members of the subcommittee, Becca Summers with the Virginia League of Conservation Builders would like to thank Senator Hanger for um, introducing this piece of legislation. Um, and we share the thoughts of our colleagues at CBF and support the bill. Are there others? Mr. Chairman, the uh, administration supports the bill. Thank you. <laughs> yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, no. um, if, if, if we could, just for simplicity's sake, the director, if you could just give us a, a, a brief outline of what we're, what we're looking at <coughs> in the process here. Mr. Chairman, this bill would, um, <coughs> in large part, uh, put in code um, a process that we have um, used for the two existing pipelines with one exception, and that is that uh, we have uh, uh, used the uh, core 
nationwide permit for the stream crossings, this would say that for uh, pipelines of more than 36 inches, we would uh, be constrained to do to use a um, our individual permitting process. Uh, that, in our view, would not wouldn't be substantively different than what we've done. It would be procedurally different, but it also would provide uh, more review on, on the part of the public. So uh, stream crossings would be done with an individual permit. Uh, we would be required to, to do the um, separate uplands 401 certification, which we did this time. That was a unique thing um, that we haven't done in the past, and, and we do that. And, um, uh, and, and those are, are the primary provisions uh, that, it would, that it would provide. So it would uh, largely say, as, as the <coughs> patron said, um, uh, take the experience you've done right, done before. Um, essentially, in our view, they do the same thing, but um, rather than use the nationwide 12, you would use uh, an individual permitting process for the stream crossing section of it. Yes, sir. All the stream crossing <coughs> Um So I, when um, Delegate Rizul came in, it was 500 crossings of the same river. I mean, you're, you're going to have to do 500 individual permits. Is that is that what we're looking at, or not really? I mean, is it not the no, not necessarily. Um, it's I don't believe you have 500 crossings of the same river, but, but you you could conceivably um, do all of those crossings in an individual per, in okay. one individual okay. permit, okay. or or it might be two or three depending on what makes sense. But uh, conceivably, it would be uh, one, but it would be a state permit rather than the federal. Okay. And David, would I be correct? Lines 144 speaks to that where each crossing is a separate project. However, only one permit would be required to buy it. There's, not, if there's nothing in here that, that right. I have seen that would require a separate permit for each crossing. That would be uh, uh, administratively impossible. Right. Yes, sir. Any other questions? Yes, sir, Tony. Chairman. Um, so, again, on the issue of the state's efforts, federal efforts the court mm -hmm. Do, are we confident that um, the Corps efforts our efforts are, are doing what we intend them to do and, and, and then also are are we being redundant are, are we are you gonna have somebody out there holding hands with the, with somebody from the core both both looking and saying yeah this is which, which I'm not saying is always a, a, a bad thing, but you know we, we need to be responsible as well. Are, are we are we taking care of the environment? We're taking care of the water through these efforts w without a bunch of extra government bureaucracy. Uh, you, you would have, <coughs> excuse me, Mr. Chairman. You would have um, for the stream crossings a core action and a um, um, a state action, um, but. Um, the uh, and so so that there's an administrative difference. Um, there may or may not be um, a substantive difference depending on the decisions that are made um, in in our permitting process. Uh, so um, uh, so it would uh, provide um, uh, for a number of folks the uh, sort of the um, an, ad an additional review by the public of the stream crossings per se of, of that individual problem. But there would be um, a federal action and a state action. An, an extra layer, I'm sorry, Mr. Go ahead. Chairman. Yeah, a, an extra layer of protection and assurance. Uh, that would be a good way to look at it. Yes, sir. Any other questions from the committee? <coughs> We're here set. Second. Move properly seconded. Recommend reporting Senate Bill 950. No further discussion on the motion. Members of the court are voted. All members voted to carry the report. The bill is reported six to nothing. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That and 500 ain't bad, Mr. 500 is good. 500 is good this morning. All right. Well, that completes our docket. We will rise. Carry on.